Welcome to the 2021 Dispute Computing Conference. I am Ashur Mostifawi, and I will present you a joint work with Mathieu Perrin and our students. This work is about the space complexity of component swap based data structures. Because coordination between processes that access shared resources can be captured as co current data structures, we have to study the complexity of, of their implementations. One can implement shared data structures using locks. However, locks do not allow uh, process crashes. Indeed, if some process crashes, the whole computation stops. If one wants to get rid of locks, we can use weight-free computing or log-free computing. Log-free computing is weaker than weight-free in the sense that weight-free uh, progress condition guarantees that every process uh, progresses. If any process issues an operation on the data structure, it will complete. This is not the case with log-free computing. Some, some process may stop. This means that it issues a, an operation and this operation may never terminate. But in this case, each time the first uh, process uh, fails, another process makes some uh, progress. Uh, if we consider weight free computing or log free computing, unfortunately, not all data structures have weight free. Uh, have, uh, can be implemented if we have uh, crashes and asynchrony. This is why uh, Maurice Hurley introduced in 1991 the concept of universality. He brought that component set or component swap is universal in the sense that using only read and write operations on registers and component set hardware instructions, one can implement any object that has a sequential specification. To prove this, he proposed the universal construction. It's a generic data structure that is that can be parameterized with the specification of data structure like queue, stack, set, and so on. And this universal construction will emulate this data structure. This is what has been done for what we call closed classical computing models, where we have an a priori known and fixed number of processes. We always say, let us consider a system composed of n processes, among which a given number of processes may crash and so on. OK? <laughs> I'm sorry. So when we have this, we have universal constructions. And it has been proved recently that these constructions need the mechanism of helping. Helping is the fact that any process that issues an operation, that invokes an operation on the, on the shared data structure, needs to help on the pending operations before it completes its own operation. It is necessary. And it has been also proved that the space complexity of any universal construction can be constant, but it is linear with the number of processes. This may be a big uh, problem when we consider multi-threaded systems. Indeed, in multi-threaded okay, multi systems, there's no bound on the number of threads uh, uh, during a long running execution. Threads may be created and may die, may leave uh, during the execution. The only guarantee we have is that at any time, there's a finite number of active threads. 
we have what we call a finite con uh, concurrence. This model has been in introduced by, by Merit and Tobenfeld two decades ago. Uh, recently, it has been proved that the component set is still universal in this model. So even if we do not know the number of the processes, even though this number may evolve and, and grow unboundedly, component swap is still able to implement any data structure with, uh, speci with sequential specification by using read and write operations on registers. In this paper, we want to study the space complexity of component set based universal constructions. As it cannot be a function of the number of processes because it is virtually unbounded in finite. We was one wondering whether it is possible to design universal construction, the complexity, the space complexity of which depends only on pending operations. This means a constant space complexity during the quiescent periods. The quiescent period is period where no, where there's no pending operation. However, this paper proves that the space complexity cannot depend on pending operations. It depends on the total number of, of uh, ever issued operations. And consequently, the space complexity is unbounded. So the first contribution is that the quiescent space complexity of any component set universal construction cannot be constant. This is a lower bound. And then we prove that this bound is tight. This means that we may design universal construction that meets the lower, the, the lower bound. It can have a space complexity that is as lower as needed as soon as it is unbounded. So it, it could be uh, the polylog, uh, logarithmic, log star, and so on. But it cannot be constant. First, we define the notion of the uh, quiescent complexity. If we consider, if one considers a finite uh, execution, because we are talking about uh, uh, quiescence, if we have a finite execution of an algorithm, we can say that it is X uh, quiescent if exactly X operations were invoked and all of them have completed. Okay. And we want to, to, to measure this quiescent complexity for any universal construction. And for doing so, we use the notion of mute process. Indeed, these universal construction we are studying use component set. A component set is a special operation where you propose to update a register, but you may fail. When you execute component set on, on a register, you propose two values. If the value of the register is equal to the first value, then you update it with the second one. When the process invokes component set on a register, it may fail or it may succeed. And a, a mute process is a process that always fails in all its attempts to execute component set. This is very, very problematic because as I said just before, the helping mechanism is important 
to ensure that all operations will terminate. However, in order to help someone, this process, in order to help some uh, process, this process needs to announce itself. If it does not announce itself, I'm not aware that it is should an operation. This is why all universal constructions use what we call an announcing, an announcement data structure. It, each process that issues an operation inserts itself or inserts its operation in this announcement list. And hence, the enemy operation will first try to, to terminate all pending operation. But the announcement, the queue, is itself a shared data structure. And in order to have the consistency on this data structure, we use comparant set. Otherwise, we can lose some nodes, we can have a double insertion, okay? And, and uh, a process that uh, tries to, in, to announce itself by inserting a node in this announcement queue, may fail in all its attempts at coherence swap. And then, if he fails in all its attempts, no, no process will be aware that this process is issued an, an operation. This is what we call a mute operation. And using this concept, we, we, we propose indistinguishable configurations. This means we have a system that may be in two states, what we call a configuration, that some process cannot distinguish. And by this means, we prove the following uh, proposition. All weight-free algorithms with constant creation complexity have mute execution. So we consider weight-free algorithm and we assume that they have a constant uh, quotient complexity. So we suppose that as it is constant, <laughs> <I'm sorry. clears throat> if it is constant, we assume that this algorithm has a tight bound K on its uh, complexity. And then we build the configuration where all those k locations are covered by at least two mute processes. A location, we say that the location is covered by, by a process when the process is about to write to modify the state of, of the location. Thus, each of the k locations is covered by at least two mute processes. Once we have this configuration, we can see that there exists an extension of this configuration where the process terminates and its write operation is overwritten by its second process. However, as the second process is itself mute, we can say that there is a mute execution of the algorithm. On the other side, we have proved that no weight-free implementation of a counter has a mute execution. A counter is a simple object that has two operations, read and increment. Okay, it, it cannot have a mute execution. This, uh, together with the with, with proposition, the proves that it cannot have a constant equation complexity. We have proposed a parameterized universal construction. It is a construction that has parameter, which is function. And this function allows to tune the space complexity of, of, of the data structure. 
it uses what we call operation nodes. An operation node is a node that is created by a process when it invokes some operation on the shared data structure. It has three fields, the operation, its result, it is bottom initially, and the Boolean, which is false initially. It says whether the operation is completed or not. So when the process sees that the operation is completed, it can return by returning uh, the result. We have a queue called announcement. And each node of this queue has two fields, a reference pointer to an operation and the pointer to the next announce node. And we have a register called linearization that points to a linearization, a linearization node, which has three fields, the state of the mediated object, a pointer to an operation and its result. Indeed, this node, pointed by, by the variable linearization, it represents the most recent state of the emulated object. Let us see this on an example. We have the announce queue, which is now empty. The variable linearization that points to the initial state, and here with fictitious new uh, uh, operation. Assume that three processes start and want to execute an operation on this object, P1, P2, P3. They all try to insert, to announce the operation in this queue, of course exactly one will succeed and two others will fail. The two processes that fail will uh, try again. However, if they try again to insert the, the operation, they can be in concurrency with new uh, processes that have arrived and so on. So if they only keep on the trying and, and trying and so on, they may never terminate and you will have a lock-free implementation. In order to avoid this situation, P2 and P3 will try to create a new announce node. P2 will try to, to create it and P3 will try We'll, we'll try to, to create it. Only one will succeed, but no matters. Whatever, which of these two processes will succeed, we'll have a new node. The importance of this new node is that the new processes that will, that will issue operations on this object will no more try to insert in this node, but in this one. And, and hence what we have. We have a bounded contention for all this first pool of processes. They will no more be in concurrency with the new ones, okay? And here we have P2 and P3. They will try to, to insert the operation. If one of, the, one of them will succeed and the other will fail, but eventually they will all succeed because we have a bounded contention and the new processes will only compete on this new node. What is important to see is that we have the helping mechanism, which means that as soon as the first operation is inserted into the announce queue, all these processes will we'll, we'll try to help operation one. Helping when some process, before trying to insert its uh, operation, it will first pass the whole queue from the end. Helping 
all the pending operations, when they arrive to the head, they can try to insert their own operation in, in the corresponding node. And here, for example, P3 is the one who succeeded to terminate the, the operation of P1. But it could be P4, or P6, or P2, or P1 itself. And when this is done, some process we do not do which one, and it, it could be a different one, will update this pointer to the new state of the object. As soon as this is updated and this is updated to the true, P2 or P3 can change this node. And for example, P2 succeeded. Although it's P3 that succeeded in, in helping P1, it is P2 that succeeded in inserting its own operation. And this process P4 succeeded here. No matters, because even though P3 fails, we know that it will succeed next time because it will be the only process that will compete for this node. And P5 and P6, in order to avoid to compete with new arriving processes, they will create a new announced node, and so on. So the question is, what I presented in this example, each time a process fails to announce its operation, it creates a new node. Is this uh, reasonable? The question is, after how many fails does the process need to create a new announced node? The response to this question is in the parameter function f. The function f defines the number of fails before a process creates a new node. And we have F minus one rank fails before a, a creation. And the function F gives directly its space complexity where X is the total number of issued operations. The only constraint of, on F is it should be unbounded with X. To conclude, this paper proposed the tight bound on space. To conclude, this paper proves that there's a tight bound on space complexity of component set algorithms. This complexity can be as, as low as needed, but it needs to be unbounded. One can say, why not consider log star? Indeed, there's a counterpart. The lowest is this, the higher can be time complexity due to the contention. There are two extreme cases. If the function f is constant, we no more have uh, the weight-free uh, property. The, the universal construction is log-free. On the other opposite, if f is infinite, Time complexity depends only on instantaneous contention. Finally, there's an open question. Does there exist the universal special instruction, hardware instruction that allows constant space complexity with no counterpart? Thanks very much. <laughs>